all right, you're late. I told you, you had a five-minute break, and you're late. You have to go to the principal's office. I'm, I'm sending you home with a note to your parents. You're incorrigible. Okay, accessing keynote settings and loading the text file. Now that, you, now that the keynote text file is established, and you've begun populating it with annotations, you need to link it to your project. Loading this file into the project is simple and needs to happen only once. Additionally, loading this keynote file is a, pro uh, is a project setting, not a user setting. Once the file is linked, all team members will have access to the keynotes. As a side note, if you are working in a team environment, make sure to place the keynote file in a location everyone has access to, like a network resource. Placing it on your C drive will allow you access, but it will not allow others on your team to see the notes. Hmm. Well, we'll discuss that in greater detail when we discuss BIM 316 collaboration. That's not 100% true. Not 100% true. To access the keynote settings and load the keynote text file, Go to the annotation tab in the ribbon, locate the tag panel, and then click Keynote, Keynote Settings as shown, or as I'm about to show you, uh, in the annotate, Keynote, in the uh, tag panel, and you'll see Keynote, and then Keynote Settings. This command will open the Keynote Settings dialog box. Here, you can define the project's Keynote file, as well as adjust some other settings. To load the keynote file, click the browse button and navigate to the text tile you created, the text file. <laughs> Excuse me. And again, it's in the root. It's in the root directory, right? Unless it was on a network file. And then, if you didn't have an internet connection, you wouldn't be able to access it. Keynote table reloaded successfully. Here are some other variables that you can set in the Keynote Settings dialog box. File path. The file path defines how Revit Architecture looks for your text file using one of three methods. Now anyone who knows anything about external references in AutoCAD can appreciate the following passage. Absolute. The absolute options follows UNC naming conventions and navigates your network or work workstation for a specified location, okay? This doesn't really explain it, but it does say that it does relative. This option locates the text file relative to your RVT project file. If you move the RVT file in the text file and maintain the same folder structure, the keynote file will be found and automatically loaded. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Um, absolute is the full, full path, whereas relative will look a few directories up and as long as that text, uh, that, that directory tree is consistent, it'll find it. But if it's not, it, it'll cut itself off at a certain tier of a, a subdirectory tree. It's a good way to explain it. I, my internet connection is down right now. They're doing work. Uh, Verizon's doing work, and Spectrum's doing work, and um, uh, Altice One is doing work. So this whole network's down. Anyway. Yeah, uh, we can get into absolute and relative coordinates and absolute and relative uh, external reference path locations later, but it's, it's an exercise in and of itself. It's an important exercise. It's a lot more important than AutoCAD, but it's just as important in Revit. And with anything else, absolute and relative coordinates are important, especially when it comes to dimensioning things from the benchmark. But that's for another class, and I offer that as well in a more concise fashion. Again, this is the speed demon at work. Um, these, these fundamental classes tend to be a little slower uh, and conform to your speed. And uh, there will be handouts and there will be textbooks and you'll be able to perform these exercises and I won't let you leave um, without, your, uh, without your full confidence that you're going to be able to get a job doing it or go back to your office and show that you learned something in the class. Uh, as long as you appreciate it and you don't give me any lip because <laughs> then you're not going to get the care that you need. Again, you only get out of this what you put into it. Right? You only get out of this class what you put into it. And if you, if you want to sit there and just uh, not pay attention and, and critique, then, then good. Again, you're more than welcome to get up in front of the camera yourself. And then you have carte blanche to teach your staff any way you'd like. I uh, give you that luxury. But this class, again, is for three-year-olds. I've got, what, how many 
20 years till they get into the workforce, 13 years, right? Before they actually can get working papers, or is it 14, 17? Yeah, so 14 years. I got 14 years to practice my delivery before the kids get into the workforce. Because you figure by that time, uh, the market will be ripe for new uh, ambitious talent by that time, right? You figure the 30-somethings will either be in the unemployment office, uh, the 50-year-olds will be retired, and uh, the 40-year-olds will be, uh, you know, probably having cardiac arrests because they can't find a job in the drafting profession, in the drafting industry or the design industry because they decided that this was just a, a bunch of geek speak and uh, they just disregarded it and uh, mocked it and found someone else that shared their common view and they thought the collectively the, the, the collective bargaining agreement they had between their two brain cells actually were really both uh, skewed or brain damaged. All right, so I'm not going to get off on the tangent. Uh, at library locations, uh, uh, this option lets you put the text file in the default library location defined in the file locations tab of the options dialog box, application options. And that's probably one of the best bets. File, oops, options. Uh, let's find it here, hold on. Uh, blah, 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 user interface, file locations. Okay, so let's just, ah, this box doesn't expand. This, this box is really irritating. It doesn't expand. And God forbid, God forbid you have a, you can hover over it. Um, but again, this is one of my template files. Um, I have a, a template myself that I have in here. Um, I have two, actually. I've created an electrical template that it's for sale and a color-coded conduit template. In any event, just for expedition purposes, when I get thrown into the gooey, uh, in any event, it's always there in my copy. In any event, you can see there's a default path for certain things, and point clouds is one of them. Um, we'll get into that. Point clouds are fascinating. Um, and as you can see, there's also some, um, some, um, some default files for analysis. Um, but again, you can place these files in all sorts of places. Imperial Library, Imperial Detail Name, library path and if we hover over some of these you'll see that you'll also be able to uh, have it look back to where you keep all of common files that you use from project to project primarily template files right so it goes along those lines you have to start thinking along those lines if you start arbitrarily throwing them all over the place like they do in most shops that i've been in all you need to do is just create stress more stress and more stress for all your technicians. And then you're going to get the 23-year-old kid that looks like he's 40 that wants to beat you up <laughs> every morning because he's, he's taking the job home already. I mean, I, I've seen 23-year-olds that are acting like miserable 50-year-olds. They're just not happy already. I'm not going to mention any names, but just it's, I could see it starting already. I, I could see it. I could see me at 23. <laughs> It's doing the same thing. It does the same thing over and over. This, this, this type of work, it will really play tricks with you. It'll take its toll on your psyche, you know, and, and you'll insist, and you'll convince yourself, or be convinced that the methodologies and the workflow that you're performing is correct, when in actuality it's detrimental to your well-being and, and, your, and your functioning within the firm. And again, you could be the only one, or you two or three could be the only ones that actually think you know, and the rest of the folks just have folks coming and going. As long as they get the drawings out the door and no one really complains, I guess, does it matter what happens to your staff if they decide, you know, they're, uh, they're really going to be pissed off all day? Yeah, anyway, I'm just telling you, it's, uh, it's a boggling, perplexing industry. A boggling and perplexing. So there's a key, uh, there's a note here that follows. Um, numbering method. Numbering method defines how the keynotes are numbered by keynote. This option allows you to number keynotes as they come from the associated text file by sheet. With this option enabled, the keynotes are numbered sequentially on a per sheet basis. So if we get back out of here, and we get back out of here, and we go back to keynote, and we stay on point, we go to keynote settings, you'll see that there's also a numbering method by keynote, by sheet, and those three radio buttons, absolute, relative, library locations, right? This still needs to be reloaded, but I'll just go back, 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 back,
again, all it takes is your internet to go down, right? Let's just uh, reload that. And let's hit OK. We should be good for now. Now, that being said, all right, let me just double check, see if Spectrum, uh, let me see if Charter Communications got their, uh, nope, I got it. still down. Anyway, so um, yeah, I'm going to read this bin manager note, and as you can see, I'm rushing, I'm trying to sprinkle in some real world scenarios because I've seen and I've experienced the frustration. I've seen and experienced the frustration, and if you go in half cocked, and if you don't have the, um, the, the, the I'm not going to say the education, and if you haven't done your research, and if you haven't actually, um, or if you haven't gone to school to learn some of these tools, and, but you attempt to, you, you may find it very, very challenging. It doesn't mean it's insurmountable, but it's going to be challenging to you. And, and the level you're going to be able to achieve is going to be based on how much research and how much time you put in and whether or not you have faith in the fact that this tool is designed to help you expedite your projects. Um, whether or not that is falling on deaf ears is based purely on your perspective. Again, I already have seen the other side of it. So I already have a relatively, a relatively good opinion, or at least a relatively lucid idea of the facts of the matter. And I also have seen the folks that are coming out of these universities and coming out of these, uh, uh, these companies that are being hired to train your staffs. Now, we're not going to talk about that just yet. But I just so happen to have a, a unique opportunity to get an in-depth look at the other side of the consultant side and just what you're going to get when you hire your consultant and the tracks they come from. I, uh, I do tend to feel that I come from a unique perspective and I'm going to hold that as valuable to me. Whether or not you do is based on your perspective. But I have also seen the, uh, the folks that you're going to be looking for to help you train your staff and, and how their methodologies and, and how they come up through the industry, these consultants that you're going to need to hire to instruct your staff on these practices. So again, there's a method to my madness. There's a method to my madness. There's a method to my madness. All right, now, let's get to this bin manager's note because if I don't, I'll go off on a tangent and keep going off on tangents because I like to talk shop. You know, I haven't had many opportunities to sit and talk uh, with folks about the methodologies of instructing this type of curriculum. I've had plenty of opportunities to talk about the curriculum, or at least talk about the subject matter. But I haven't had much of an opportunity to talk about, you know, how you would uh, attempt to convey this information and drive it home and get it into their frontal lobe so it sticks, uh, you know. You, if you want to illustrate your point, um, you're going to have to maybe uh, take the, the path less traveled. In any event, loading or reloading keynotes, and this is a BIM manager note, once the keynote TXT files load into Revit, it is available for the team to use. As we've mentioned, changes can be made to this file on the fly while the project is open and active, although this is true. If changes are made to the keynote file while the project is open, the keynote file will need to be reloaded. Just say anything else. Um, into the project for the change to be visible to other team members. You can think about like you can think of that like sync with central. Same concept. It is the same concept. Just like in the collaborative tab, which we can spend a year going over. And we're gonna. <laughs> Just like in the collaborative tab. It's the same concept. You're going to have to synchronize with that recently burned in version uh, as it was magnetically stored onto its boot sector, its sector and on the disk. You'll have to refine it, refresh it, and get it back into random access memory. And pull it from the ROM, if you will, if it's a solid state. In any event, I'm going to talk about that. Um, that's for another class. Now, there are two ways to do this. Open the Keynote Settings dialog box and click the Reload button, which you just saw me do. Once this is done, you'll need to use Synchronize with Central if the project is work shared. And your team members will also need to use the Sync with Central to gain access to the changes. Close and reopen your project file. Alright, so, it's going to go into adding keynotes and then we're going to open up a, an exercise. 
um, a sample exercise. It's going to be C19, sample building start, the one I have open, this small one. And uh, we're going to get into it a little, uh, a little later after this video, once this video concludes. But um, again, this is next generation stuff. I'll give you a hint. I was the oldest guy in the consultant company. I was the oldest guy there. I was 30 years their superior. They're hungry. They're smart. They're young. They've got youthful vigor. And they're coming for your jobs. And they're, they're training people to take them. Just letting you know. I'm letting you know it's what's breathing down your neck as you're looking down the ass end of 50. So I'll let you know what's, what's breathing down your neck. Have a good day.